everyone and welcome back. Today I want to cover how Maxmo integrates with GIS and other map systems. And today we're going to do a demonstration of how it does that and as it pertains to transmission assets. There are only two slides for the purpose of just illustrating this integration and then we'll jump into a quick demo. So Maximo GIS integration is a tool in Maximo that not only allows you to map features and assets in GIS, but also allows you to auto create, update, and keep Maximo synced with Esri and vice versa. Users can then interact with data on a map uh, in Maximo, such as work orders, service requests, assets, and use mapping tools, you can quickly identify, query, and then select these objects on a map to quickly conduct work easily and efficiently. And this is especially important to supervisors when creating work packages for technicians, and then also for technicians for locating and conducting the work. So this is what we will walk you through uh, as far as a demo today. This is the bidirectional integration with Esri ArcGIS and Maximo. And so a lot of GIS clients typically cringe when they hear bidirectional, as a lot of clients actually prefer, for example, wanting status or feature changes only coming into Maximo. So I always like to point out that there is security that you can set to accommodate that. You can synchronize and create transmission assets in Maximo and then link that with Esri features that give positioning information on the map. And this allows you to create a status update in Maximo that will then publish that link feature back into GIS. So work orders and service requests are oftentimes authored in Maximo and then publish the location to GIS to map uh, to link features. But the real value that we see that comes from this is instead of monitoring assets in a tabular view where we see, for example, an issue with a transmission asset in a table, we can now see it visually in a map. And so say that you have a lot of work orders in a specific area, you can begin to identify trends. And by using mapping tools, you can then query and easily select those bad actors for future maintenance. And I oftentimes get asked, how does this integration work? So Maximo has a toolkit, which I'll show in a second, called Map Manager. And this is where we use REST APIs and service and Esri map services and feature services to create the integration. We use Esri map services to visualize the data on the map. We use the feature services if we need to edit or insert any of the feature classes. And for data synchronization, we use a tool within Maximo called the Maximo integration framework. And this is to keep everything updated and up to speed. This demo is leveraging some of the free map servers Esri has out there. And this includes their energy and utility data package that we're going to bring in to Maximo. The free map servers do have limited data, but it's still enough to show a good amount of its capability. So let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration. The first step in enabling Esri features in Maximo is to connect your Esri server. And so the first thing that we'll do here is we're going to navigate to some, a tool called Map Manager within Maximo. So here we'll click into Map Manager to view some of the mapping features that we have integrated into this environment. Here we can see a list of maps this instance of Maximo has access to. And this includes Bing, Google, Esri, and others that our teams use in their day to day. And so the one that we'll show and focus on today is a free free map server available by Esri that gives us transmission data. And this is the UN electric map. When configuring map, there's a few items that you'll need for the map to be available. This includes your Esri server information, the geocode route URL, and your username and password. Within the map tips uh, tab, what we're going to see here is uh, being able to set the connection between objects in Maximo and feature information in Esri. Once we've, there's a couple more steps to setting up this process within Maximo, but once you have that map configured, you're ready to use the mapping features within Maximo. 
And so the next part of this demonstration that we'll focus on is some of the mapping capabilities that we see valuable when looking at trends of work or assets on a map. So let's go ahead and navigate to the asset application. And the first thing that we're gonna do is pull up a transmission asset record and navigate to the map tab. So here we'll type in, we can even type in high voltage as a description and drill into this asset. This is a high voltage tower with a Maximo that we've recorded and connected to Esri. And if we click on the map tab, we're going to first see the associated Esri feature along with key information that we're bringing in for this particular asset. And we'll give it just a second to load. Down below, what you're going to see is the request that we're making to Esri in a second. And here you can see the URL where we're pulling that data from the server via REST call. And by clicking on this asset, I'm going to go ahead and click the Identify tool. We can then see all the information that we're actually bringing in from Esri. I'll just expand this real quick. We'll navigate to... It's actually brought in a couple different features, but the one we want is that high voltage tower. So here is all the information that we're bringing in from Esri for this particular asset. And this just goes to show that integration between the two. Now this is all information key within this Esri feature. The first thing that I want to start walking you through is some of the capabilities we have within Core Maximo uh, that allows us to, to work against that Esri server. And here we're gonna see, uh, just quickly, if I click all these layers, you're gonna see all the individual features we're pulling in. But for this use case and this demonstration, we're only gonna wanna focus on the assets that we want to create work against. And so this tool that I just brought up is called Layers. This is the first tool we'll look at. And this gives you the ability to filter features by clicking and unclicking the Layers tab. And as you see that you saw when I was clicking through, you can automatically see changes in what is displayed and what you're able to query on the map so that you're really only looking at the assets of interest to you or other items that are interested to you. And this is again coming from Esri. Uh, the next tool that I'll highlight, and really the importance of this is to quickly be able to uh, query and bring in assets that you want to create work packages against. Another tool I, that you'll be able to use is the ability to draw on the map itself. Uh, typically, when I see this used, it's for drawing uh, an image or uh, highlighting a certain certain area on the map that you want a technician to be able to locate quickly um, or give a technician additional information so that they can do the work. And so this is something that you can export, include as part of a work order uh, to help the technician take corrective action. The next tool that I see um, is our select tool. It's the most common tool we see used when pulling multiple work orders uh, or records into a query. And so here, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is create a little bounding box around the area that we want to query. And from there, it's gonna query all the different Esri features within this area. And when we export it out by clicking this button, it's going to create this query for us. So here, we're gonna go ahead and create that. And the results are going to be created in a query. And I'll just pull up example what that looks like. And so here we have a list of saved queries, one of them being the results of our as research. And here is what we pulled up. We have several different records that we pulled together from the map that we can then create work against. Uh, this saves a tremendous amount of time instead of having to go through each individual asset and creating work against each one. This is where we can then create a record for all, or a work order for all the records we've just created. So here we have two assets that we're gonna create work against. You can either create work for all of the records that we pulled through this query for each record, and we can even generate service requests for each quickly. 
Uh, but for this demo, we're just going to go ahead and say that we want to create work orders for all the records. And Maximo will do that for us. And as we scroll down, we can see that this brought in both of those assets that need work done against them. But let's go ahead and quickly go back to the map. There's just a couple more things I want to point out uh, as part of this demonstration. Now that we've walked through how to quickly query and bring in multiple assets, there's another component here, another tool we oftentimes see that I just wanted to highlight briefly is the querying tool. So for manual queries where you want to use a function instead of a bounding box, you can do so through using this tool. And for example, we will uh, bring in a specific layer. We will say we only want to query those features that have a certain maximum voltage. We'll say it's greater than, uh, let's go ahead and say, uh, maybe, maybe, thing, maybe anything over 757 volts and click the search button. Very similar to what we saw with the bounding boxes. This is then going to query and bring in only those those assets within the map that have this particular let's go ahead and increase this just a little bit and we can also increase the tolerance of this and there we go so as we increase the tolerance that increases the span at which this search uh, queries against, and here's some of the results that we get. Very similar to what we saw in the bounding boxes. Uh, this is just a quick way to query, bring in this information so that we can create work against it. Um, but with that, we've seen how we can leverage mapping capabilities in Maximo to quickly query uh, as we features and create work packages for assets based off the information displayed on the map. Later on in this demonstration, we'll show how a technician uh, can leverage a map as well when out in the field to conduct work. And that's what I wanted to show today. Thanks for watching and uh, tune in for more demonstrations in the future.